I now look to Ray Williams, Chief of Staff, Wadham College, to close the case for the opposition. Mr. President, thank you for affording me the great privilege to speak on this motion. And may, and may I also thank our honoured guests and the members without whom there would be no Oxford Union. Forty years ago, something remarkable occurred. Britain chose as Prime Minister Europe's first female head of government. And what a Prime Minister she was. Margaret Thatcher swept away generations of political and economic orthodoxy. Through sheer force of will, she stamped her mark on history and left a legacy that we contend with to this day. We are all familiar with that legacy. The pervasive ideology of free market liberalism that even went on to corrupt the Labour Party, the purported party of the working class, and continues to pervade our politics today. And yet today we are asked to consider a truly ludicrous proposition that Thatcher, the milk snatcher herself, might have been a hero for the working class. To stand and speak... <laughs> to stand and speak in favour of such a motion should prompt a deep embarrassment in any right-thinking person. And yet we are honoured to play host to two very notable Conservative politicians and perhaps two very notable wannabe future Conservative politicians. <laughs> to reason that Conservatives would be eager to try and rewrite history in this way. How better to bolster their failing ideology than to try to point at one of our great enemies as one of our great friends. We are joined by veritable titans of Thatcher's 1980s government and appropriately the motion is like something out of 1984. Remember the slogans, war is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength and Thatcher, working class hero. <laughs> are attempting to rewrite history, do not let them. As we have heard, to be a hero, one must be exceptional. Be Daniel Wilkinson-esque. <laughs> we might imagine, therefore, that after her death in 2013, the British working classes were pouring onto the streets to mourn the passing of their noble champion. Not quite. Instead, in Brixton and elsewhere, um, the site of violent protests against her leadership in 1981, crowds gathered in an impromptu celebratory street party that attacked Thatcher's name and condemned her poisonous legacy, chanting Maggie, 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 dead, dead, dead. <laughs> but is it not for the working class themselves to choose their heroes? And in 2013, even then Prime Minister, the not remotely working class David Cameron was forced to admit that Lady Thatcher divided opinion. The inescapable truth is that the British working class revile Lady Thatcher. They abhor the cult of greed and orgy of selfishness that she promoted. They resent, they resent the divisions her callous campaign of mass privatisation and local government cuts unleashed, and they distrust her personal belief that there is no such thing as society. You've heard the introductions of the other committee speakers. I'm the working class kid they brought in for balance. Margaret Thatcher is no hero to me, and she is no hero to the kids I grew up with. But Thatcher's harmful legacy towards working communities extends far beyond this country. There is not a national working class. The working class is international. And through her foreign policy, founded on an unflinching support for Ronald Reagan's United States, Thatcher held in contempt working class communities located tens of thousands of kilometers away. She supported Chile's General Pinochet, a military dictator who took power in a brutal coup in 1973. Along with the murder of thousands of Chileans, Pinochet, like Thatcher, dismantled popular political institutions in favour of economic ultra-liberalism. In Chile, the neoliberal system was at the heart of a totalitarian system that harmed the working class in ways that make the damage to British communities and civic institutions pale in comparison. Torture, assassination and imprisonment of trade union leaders, the so-called enemy within. Where there was despair, 
Thatcher's ally brought destruction. And in apartheid South Africa, Thatcher branded Nelson Mandela's ANC as a terrorist organization, holding back the progress of the anti-apartheid movement, harming the communities of South Africa. Thatcher, therefore, was both reviled by the working class at home and harmful to its prospects abroad. But even in the face of this, there is one individual who provides the clearest evidence that this conservative prime minister was no hero for the working class, Lady Thatcher herself. Margaret Thatcher never professed nor aspired to be a hero of the working class. Instead, she shirked from any such responsibility, denying the very existence of a working class. Let us recall her oft-quoted declaration in 1987. There's no such thing as society. There are individual men and women. People must look after themselves. It is our duty to look after ourselves. One thing you can't accuse her of is failing to speak her mind. And so, before I go on, a personal note. The past four terms I have spent on committee have given me so many opportunities, none greater than the opportunity to represent our membership. It surprised many when I was offered the position of Chief of Staff, responsible for helping put together these famous de debates. Surprising, given I have long been known as something of an outsider here, I have fought on many issues in the name of reform. I suspect no stance of mine has been more controversial than my opposition to electoral pacts. Slates, though theoretically sound, have here at the Union been degenerated by ambition and betrayal, toxifying our elections. That is why it shocked me that our librarian would seek to subvert the expressed will of the membership and rules of the society for his personal electoral benefit, conning potentially dozens of other candidates to satisfy his desire for the presidency. I cannot continue to serve as Chief of Staff given the circumstances. Mr. President, please accept my letter of resignation effective immediately. And furthermore, and furthermore, and furthermore, I must support the impeachment of the librarian that is being brought by members of the Standing Committee as I speak. Thank you.